being a teenager and, and making that step between being a child into adulthood is really difficult for some families and uh, I actually had a great childhood so um, when I went to court even uh, after my psych report and everything they said that I was the person who had no excuse so in that sense I don't even know that I was particularly rebelling I think that I just didn't really know how to negotiate my way um, in this new world of being a young adult. So yeah, my, I think my relationship with my father was really important and uh, but when I left home it wasn't under good circumstances and, and that generation, that era, uh, for him it was really hard for him to articulate that emotionally. For some reason I had it in my head at the wonderful age of 17 that I, I didn't think that I would ever get pregnant. I don't know quite where that came from, but I had that in my mind that I would never be, I would never get pregnant, even though I had always wanted children. And that experience for me, I, I think I just went into absolute blind terror about it all, really. Um, and the system at the time was not really supportive for choices and, uh, and, and I ended up doing something that I regretted for years to come. It was a, a really traumatic experience for me. And, probably more so because it, it basically went against my own belief systems. I think ultimately my two worlds became um, so far apart that it was ridiculous. So I really, uh, I was at the point where I was drinking a flagon of port a day and I, I would only eat twisties. Obviously I wasn't functioning on any sort of rational level at all by that point and then add heroin and amphetamines in there as well. Um, it's, it's amaz it amazes me to this day that I can even string a sentence together, you know. <laughs> I think uh, that's the appeal of drugs, you know, why do people take drugs? Um, because in the short term they're stupid fun, um, but, but you absolutely pay a cost for it. So I think it was probably 1986 that I got caught. I went to prison in 87, spent 88, got out in 89. Um, so yeah, on that day, I actually ended up selling heroin to a federal police officer. Not that I knew that this was a police officer, but um, that was that was um, the scenario. And uh, you know, just having my car surrounded by police, and you know, like you see in the movies. <laughs> when I went to court, I was remanded in custody. I think for two weeks, and by and so at that point, I was pretty much thinking that. Uh, that was it, um, and so then when I when I was sentenced, I was I was pretty horrified, really. I think that all everything, my abortion, my drug taking, all of it, ultimately had to do with not really seeing. You know, if if there is no no point or purpose to our life, then what I had done and the way I'd lived my life was to to go well. There is no point and purpose. There is no meaning. So who cares? So my past now. Um, is very much, well obviously I've written a book about my past, you know, I, I work with Prison Fellowship which I would only have done that if, you know, my heart for people in prison came from being a prisoner myself. So um, all of those things actually, I mean the Bible says that God uses all things for good for those who are called according to his purpose and uh, for me that just makes total sense. So now I have some sort of framework for life that makes sense to me where I can apply myself and where it does have a purpose and meaning um, and even all the really cruddy stuff, uh, my absolute worst moments have some sort of point.